recording and start the stream. Welcome to Horsin' Around, a dumbass cast. I'm your host, Nick Bergadante, and with me today I have three lovely guests if you would like to introduce yourselves. Hello, my name is Patrick Romario, and I'm an award winning animator. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I'm Jacob, and I made the Dean's list. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm Brad. I go here. <laughs> <laughs> one of one of these one of these introductions is more impressive than the others, and it's not mine. <laughs> oh, okay. But did you make the dean's list every semester, Jacob? That's what I want to know. That is a good uh, question. I, I don't want to, you know, just flop it right <laughs> out there. But I did make dean's list every semester. Oh fuck! Oh, Same, oh, dude. Goodness. Hell yeah! Let's get up, it. Up, dude, I, up, I missed up. it one semester. One semester, I was 0.25 short. Oh, I stopped. Couldn't be me. Yeah. I stopped making the dean's list in my like senior year. I was just like, fuck it. I can't be bothered. (laughs) Brutal. I cannot be asked. I I want to get education higher than bachelor's degree, and I kind of have to in my line of work. So Mm. I was like, Uh, kind of got to make that dean's list. See, um, and this is a little tip for any artists out there. Uh, I get to be stupid as a job. Um, I get Ooh. to be dumb. I I just don't have to know anything as 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 an artist because it's all from the soul, baby. <laughs> if your soul isn't in the art, then you're just not an artist. That's just it. Exactly. It doesn't it's need no like, brains. It's all just it's, it's all just look, in, the, in look, the soul. Look, personal finance management. <laughs> look, if you're not making money, you just don't have like your soul in it yet. You know, that's just all it is. He brings up a good point. He brings up a good point. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And as an mm-hmm. econ major, you can verify this. That's how it all works. You just need to have your soul in it, and then and then it all works out. That's how oh, it, yeah. all I mean, crazy. that's what I'm missing. A soul. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are. That's why. That's why there's a lot of bad businessmen out there. You know, they get yeah. they get hit by like you know FDAs and crimes. <laughs> Yeah, you're missing the soul. I'm missing the heart. Nick's missing the brain. We all got to go to the Wizard of Oz. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. We need to send all of America's top billionaires to uh, the Wizard of Oz. That's that's how we solve the world's problems. We figured it out. We've cracked it. But no, um, but that's the that's that's the whole plot twist of Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz himself is a uh, American billionaire. Shit. Oh. Exactly, oh, and that's why he was so beneficial to the city of Oz by allowing. <laughs> Please go into depth about the economic structure of Oz and how he used triple trickle down economics. To yeah, allow... you know, an Emerald City is some fucking bullshit that some billionaire was like, "See, we oh, improve society because it's all know, green." And genetics. you know, it's been covered in so many dystopian knockoffs of or reinterpretations of Oz, and like all those fucking like there was what there was the one with uh oh fuck what's his name. Um, well, I think you're going to bring up the James Franco one. Yes, but that it, is... that's dystopian because James Franco is it. That has nothing to do with the actual setting of Oz. <laughs> oh, James Franco! I remember there was a, a TV series or like a like a mini series maybe um, that was like a sort of dystopian Oz thing that was in a similar vein, but it was like, like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah, it was actually just the Wizard of Oz. You got me. Um, it was a mini series in the sense that they just had commercial breaks in the middle of it. No, it was it was just it. called Oz. That's all. Yeah, it was called. yeah. That's. I'm not even. Sh- I'm not even sure. I'm joking. A hundred percent. I'm pretty then. sure it was. It, just... It's it's probably called Oz. It probably aired on the CW at some point, and <laughs> no one has talked about it since. Yeah, that's yeah. very likely. Uh, Oz. Yep. Yep. Wait. No. This is about a prison. Never mind. Um, interesting. This is hmm. a little... inter- You know, that's a very interesting um artistic uh, direction to go in because. <laughs> When I think of the Wizard of Oz, I also think of prison. So, like, that's you know? awesome, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's epic. You know what? That's, epic. that's pretty epic. You know? Um, Pat, that's I have a question for you though. So, I got an answer. Brad was was talking to me the other day about uh, he got he got himself a new or he's, or he's getting himself a new monitor. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brad. You, you're, you're. I got one. Pro- I got, got one. I got one. one. Okay. Um, and he said, mm-hmm. he told me that the refresh rate on Uh-oh. it is 165 hertz. And, and he told me that you recommended this to him. Is that, is that I true? I don't, I don't recall recommending any monitor to anyone. Well, then Brad's oh, no. a damn dirty liar. Who was it? Somebody told me to get the 165 the and I was like, okay. to get a 165 hertz I mean, monitor? 
That's some bullshit, dude. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of hurts, bud. So I Oof. mean, that is a refresh rate that I don't think anybody has tossed around as like a refresh rate that you would want to achieve. So I'm computer. the best refresh rate of all time. I mean, it's higher than like 144, so I guess it's better. Oh yeah. But like also, I'm the best guy. You're not gonna get anything that's gonna be able to achieve that. On, uh, with 165 graphics. hertz. Sounds like someone opened up his uh, like. Uh, large jacket in the new york subway and he was like hey bud you want to buy him on yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got 165 hertz <laughs> that's so many hertz dudes how how much was it Brad? yeah uh, i i ended up getting it for 250 because all the ones that were one 150 were like shipped with like five dead pixels the manufacturer wouldn't cover the warranty Jesus. the color is washed out and i was like you know what I'll just get this one. And then I saw that it had a 144 hertz option. I was like, yeah, 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 I'll get that. And it was like 280 instead of 250. And I was like, well, that's just not worth it. I'm not paying $30 there's, extra for less hertz. There's something. Well, oh, I, I don't want to look. <laughs> I might not be a crime scene investigator. I, I, like, I don't follow the trails. <laughs> but, but when someone is like, hey, man, here's the standard number that you would expect from a monitor. And it costs more than this other one that I'm telling you definitely has more hertz on it. I'd be like, I don't know, guys. <laughs> they got me, man. They tricked me with their deals. Um, I well, also, two hundred fifty dollars seems like a really decent price for a monitor that can ref like get that refresh rate. Like, and even here, I can, I can tell you what, what kind it was. That's 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 the biggest thing that I've seen with uh, one hundred sixty five hertz is that like it's just more pricey generally like 144 is like affordable and it's good enough you need like what are you gonna do with more than 144 hertz i don't even know i i don't know man what, i don't if, know what i'm doing at all what's the resolution on it again uh 920 1920 1920 i'll tell you what uh, i'll tell you which monitor is it's the asus vg278 qr 27 inch Okay. Well, Asus... okay. At least it's, yeah, it's a real brand. Yeah, this time. it's no. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't brand. just buy a random brand. You know, I, <laughs> Asus... I I looked for I looked for ten seconds. Was the Asus VG what? VG two seventy eight QR. Interesting. Interesting. I, I'm on a bit of a spending spree lately. I, I recently bought myself a Kalimba. Oh, because... that's not too much. That you're you're going too far, bud. You're going too far. It, I, I was listening. I was watching Avatar, and they played, and I was like, "What instrument is that?" And then I bought it. I uh, well, that's better than me. I I impulse bought a guitar, and uh, oh word, I'm learning how to play it. Oh yeah, it's back there. It's the little blue one that I've had for a while, for like a month, and I'm still garbage at. I mean, a kalimba is just fucking dope because like you can make the Avatar theme. Uh, oh yeah. And it, and it Where is like, it? I, I can pull it up. I'll play it for you. Give me, give me one second. I'll go get it. All right. If I remember correctly, they actually—it's it's not actually a Kalimba. What did they use? Uh, I think they use like something that is then synthesized. I can't remember exactly. I was listening to like a video about the music of Avatar, mm -hmm. and I think it's supposed to replicate a Kalimba, but it's not exactly that sound. Really? So I just—I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Yeah, it, they fooled me then, because I, I mean, I, I think Tori got a, a Kalimba uh, recently, or no, somebody brought a Kalimba up to Brandreth for like our New Year's trip a while, like from 2019 into 2020, and uh, Tori was playing it, and it sound like it sounds just like what they have in the show. So I guess it yeah, besides it sounds really did a really good job of replicating it. Sounds um, just like a Kalimba. Yeah. All right, my dudes, I got I got my Kalimba ready. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. Here's the song. Mm -hmm. yes. Very oh. nice. All right, stop before we get banned by YouTube. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, and like, it took me a little bit, but I think fig eventually figured out which notes were which, and I like, you know, in fifteen twenty minutes or so, you could do at least the beginning part of it, and then you can progress as you go. So like, really easy to pick up, but like, sounds so fucking good. It's super good. How much? Good. How much is that? Oh, it was guy. forty bucks. It came with like some songs in a case, and I was like, "I'll, I'll oh, pay it for the case." That's cute. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it in the. Good. I'll throw the link. Sure. Yeah, drop it in the Discord. Um, Sponsor this Columba. <laughs> support, <laughs> the, support the Columba industry. They need it. I mean, what's it called? Yeah, fucking. We gotta give some ad revenue to the Columba because. We sure as hell ain't giving it to all Raid of, Shadow all, Legends. Oh yeah, all of uh, the, yeah, no, all no, no. Raid of Shadow so Legends much... got canceled. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Did it? 
No, it's I'm seeing it advertised way more often now. It's on I've PC. never I'm seen excited. a single Raid Shadow Legends advertisement. I've never gotten one. And if I get one because of this stream, I'm suing. Glad I was excited. I was You're excited fucking lucky second. if you've never gotten a Raid Shadow Legends. I've never gotten one. It's it they I, I guess they recently decided that they are making enough bank on the on the mobile side of things that they're like, all right, we can we could step things up and turn this into a PC game. So they have their own launcher now, like it's League of Legends and, and like wow, everything. What? Yeah, no, they're they're they are they must be rolling in it because they're they're producing like high quality ads for their PC version of the game now, um, which is honestly pretty amazing. Like you know we can we can dunk on them all they want, but they're doing a good hustle if they are able to jump from mobile to PC. And if they manage to survive even after doing that, then like you know hats off to them, I guess. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I have definitely been getting more Raid Shadow Legends uh, advertisements lately, so they are certainly not dead. Um, but yeah, I don't know. How's uh, how's your guys' week been? There's there's been a lot of stuff going on actually. I, I, there's a lot of stuff that we can talk about. I think but there's a lot of stuff going on. Have anything off the top of your heads that you guys want to say before I just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just bought a Kalimba. Oh wow, that's pretty cool, let's, man. Let's, let's talk about yeah. Let's, yeah, oh yeah, let's talk about that for like another thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to jump in and correct my previous statement. I actually don't know if it's the Klimba. I was me mixing it up because there's the Sugi horn in mm. Avatar The Last Oh, Airbender. yeah, yeah, that isn't that. And yeah. that's not a real instrument, but it does not. It, it is. It, it produces its own sound. Like they created different sounds in order to produce the sound that the Sugi horn makes because they're like, it's not a traditional instrument. It is like its own thing. So like they, they like mix it in with other stuff. OK, gotcha. Huh. Still, I mean, Avatar music in general, just like real fucking quality shit so yeah they did a good they knocked it out of the park uh every every which way um music people on that show mm -hmm. good music people on that show good yeah absolutely everything people i don't know if there's a single part of that show that was like objectively you know bad like what about uh that one episode Okay, yes, there were some weaker episodes, but like overall, <laughs> the overall product, great rating, great animation, great music. Like I don't I, it has it all. Um but I don't know. We could I could definitely just gush about Avatar for an hour if we wanted to, but I I I got some other things that we can talk about. Um Oh, are. you got other things other than Avatar. Yeah, he's not right. other things. This fucking guy. He's too good for Avatar now. Is yep. that what he's fucking I'm saying? That's what he's fucking it. saying. I'm too good for it. He's too um, fucking good. I saw uh Jacob, you you added that you want to talk about table art tabletop RPGs again. What did you was there something know, in particular like, that you wanted to talk about or Well, look, it was on the list before and I was like, I kind of do want to talk about tabletop RPGs, but it's already on the list, so I have to say again cuz it's been recommended before. <laughs> yeah, those ones those ones towards the top are just like things that were can be recurring cuz there's just like a really general field of like what have you been playing recently and and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if you want to talk about like what what uh, what RPG in particular were you thinking of? Just doing I, it wasn't in particular. I just wanted to like have a discussion with people about tabletop RPGs because I've been missing them a lot. But also oh, yeah. like I have like it's like that combination of like man, that's a really good idea, and then I'm like maybe I should write it down, and mm. I, I will sit on it for a month, and I'm like, Whoa. yeah, remember yeah. when I had hopes and dreams? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's when I wasn't a broken man. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I, I I just think about like the style of play, especially because I'm playing Baldur's Gate recently, and I'm just like, damn. I damn. love how like tabletop RPGs, like Baldur's Gate is probably the closest that a video game has come to replicating like actual tabletop RPG style of gameplay. Mm -hmm. But like it's kind of crazy how because of how story based and like oral history-esque that mm -hmm. tabletop RPGs functions under, like those rule sets. Yeah. Like you can't replicate it in any other format. Right. It has to be done in that format. Cause yeah. well it's literally you know, like and and it is a uh oh, what was the term that I, I, I used it in an essay once. Um emer is it emergent narrative or, or like yeah, 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 yeah. you know like a thing that is literally you're built like like the dm has some ideas for like a story and like general plot points that he would like to guide the players towards but like if it's a good dm and good players and they they mesh well with each other neither neither party has complete control over the story and it literally will change based on each other's decisions and they're they're all it's all reactive to each other's yeah. stuff. 
it's an actual like living experience like it's its own it it it, it grows into an actual like organism itself uh right. to use like weird biology terms to describe <laughs> writing oh, yeah. a, no, but a story right. but like uh yeah like it sort of blossoms into its own thing that can't really be replicated because because I, I also think about how like there are these games that are like ah oh, we got like this we're going to create a living game that's like an experience that you log into every day and i'm mm. like that's not like it's still static right. like <laughs> I'm still, I, I'm still at the, to use an analogy, I am still at the dinner table and you are the chef and you are deciding what is being cooked and you're serving it to me. Mm -hmm. Unlike like a living thing where like, for whatever reason, the food can just change in front of you for like no reason because you decided you wanted something different to eat. Or yeah, like the it chef changes. Like, it changes as you're eating it. Your taste eh, buds are changing it. Yeah, it's like you know, I served you a, this nice piece of chicken, but I've decided this chicken is actually useless. I would like to be suddenly a steak now. <laughs> like that you know, is I, a very roundabout analogy, but I get what you're saying. Yes, yeah. I, I also get it. Um, what's it called? But I also feel like that. Um. In a way, it's a little bit of a. It's like jazz, right? Like, where yeah. you could, you could improv a lot, but like there is still like set standards and set song um songs that you mm. like play. Um, so like it's still, uh, it's like for for Baldur's Gate, um, for instance, right? It's like playing a uh, it's like playing a um, what's it called? A set adventure that uh Wizards of the Coast would make. Mm. Like fucking like say for example like Avernus or whatever the fuck uh like the descendant to like Av Avernus or, or whatever Curse the fuck of it's called or, something or Curse like of Strahd yeah. yeah exactly it's like um so it's like playing one of those adventures and like there's a set end or mm -hmm. there's a couple of set ends or some shit yeah. um but like there's still a lot of room for improv and I feel like you can still achieve that with Baldur's Gate um where like say if you see an encounter up ahead uh fucking what's it called. Um, instead of trying to take that encounter head on, maybe you want to just like take it like socially, which I think is really cool of them. Like, uh, uh, I don't know if this is spoilers, but um, in the game, in the one of the earlier missions, you have to like take on a camp of goblins. Mm. Uh, and in talking with like a couple of people, I've I found at least like five different ways to take that quest, um, like if not more. And yeah. like for me, for example, like I just snuck in and like find a, found a high ground and just like shot like magic down from like a fucking like ramparts like above all the goblins and like wasn't touched and it was like all strategic and, sh and shit mm -hmm. but apparently you can take that purely social and like not fight anybody and then eventually have all of the goblins side with you yeah it's and then like, like uh sorry I, I don't want to cut you off no go on yeah uh, i was just gonna say jacob uh would, would <laughs> i think we both shared an experience where uh in our campaign, we tried to convince some goblins in the cave about uh, de de democratically electing their leaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and rising yeah, yeah. up it, against it's, the... it's that kind of thing where it's like, like uh, of course you can't have something that crazy, but I think your jazz anal analogy is really good. Where like Baldur's Gate is still like a jazz set. Like someone has already written the set for you, but it's still jazz, so you can manipulate it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very interesting how like, you know, t pure tabletop is like all improv and it's like writing the the jazz set yourself uh and so that's what's so cool about it uh but yeah th that, that's a great example nick where <laughs> like you know you have a dm who's like all right i'm gonna have you find fight some goblins and you're like uh, but what if i what talked if I about talk the political ramifications of their monarch system and that they <laughs> should have the right to elect their leader yeah and, <laughs> i mean it, you know the dm was cool with it so they 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 played along with it to you know within reason like the goblins can communicate with us so they they were like they're very dumb, so they weren't really picking on to it. But like, if as you would try to explain it more and more, it started to get into their heads a bit better. And it's like, you know, they you played it out, you role played it. Um, and that's two of the three big letters. Uh, fucking Christ, two of the three big letters of RPGs. <laughs> um, so that was yeah, it was just a cool experience. And I don't know. I think that is. I, I think in the paper I wrote for, wow, I some kind of writing class that I was doing. Um, I was basically uh, go using this as my argument to say that, like, I think, um, you know, every medium of storytelling has its 
purpose and like has value in it obviously but i think it is rpgs in that sense and and role-playing games in general are just like the way that you can tell a story is so unique and like i think it's the only one where you can't there is no set end and i think that's pretty yeah. fucking amazing um you know with I, games I, I, obviously I, it has to have an ending but still they like you said a jazz set is a good analogy yeah i, I don't know uh, your, your statement just kind of reminded me of a very funny old tweet that i remember which was some guy going like Man, I really wanted to play D&D, but I didn't really want to deal with everyone else, and I just want to play with myself. And I've just been informed that this is called writing a book. <laughs> Literally, yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's it, yeah. You're just fucking around in your own mind enough to, to come up with some characters in a world, and then, yeah, I, I've, I've been seeing some interesting, for some reason, people I've been following on Tumblr have been sharing, like, writers' posts and stuff, and people are just talking about how, like, Sometimes, or no, I think it was actually about um, Tolkien when he was writing Lord of the Rings and how he did not know, uh, he didn't think that, uh, fuck, is is Aragorn Strider or is that someone else? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, he didn't know that Aragorn was going to be the king <laughs> by the end <laughs> of the book. He just wrote in this dude and then he was just like, wait a, f- wait a second, I like this dude. Let's just keep fucking with him. And then it just evolved into, you know, the role that he had by the end of end of the books. Yeah, well, I mean, Tolkien's a great example, too, because, like, I feel like that's an example a lot of people come back to with D&D, mm-hmm. just namely because Tolkien has, of course, inspired most modern fantasy. Right. But additionally, uh, I don't know, maybe we should have figured it out that, that he would be like that when he's the guy who's like, all right, look, I'm just going to like write my own language first <laughs> and then I'll figure it out. I don't know. Yeah. What if but, I just made shit up as I went along? But it's just like, it's really funny that that, yeah, he will go into such immense detail on like obscure world building aspects. But then for main characters of the overarching plot, he's just like, I don't know. We'll just figure it out. I'll just keep going and then see where yeah, it it'll, it'll come to me. And it did. And it fucking did, so I guess it worked out. <laughs> I mean, he basically writes his own, like, lore fan fiction of his own series. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it's like, his mindset is like, alright, I'm going to cre- I'm going to create the setting, and just, and then I will make something that logically fits into the setting. And, like, the plot comes second to the world building, which is an interesting way of doing it, but um, if it works, it works, you know? Dude, he, he wrote his own languages. Insane. Yeah. Yeah, plural. Like he is it was more than one, right? Yeah. He did yeah, he yeah, Elvin's like the popular one, but he's done others. Which is wild. Um but yeah. Okay. Yeah, but then you get the side effect where like high school teachers are like Did you know I know a Tolkien Elvin? And they're like, that's they think that's the coolest <laughs> shit of all time, and I'm like, nah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun, but like yeah, can it's this cool. not be on it's... the exam? <laughs> This this exam is written exclusively in Elven. You have to write your responses in Elven. If you don't, you're gonna get an F. I'm sorry. I, I wish I was joking, but there I, I didn't have this teacher. But in high school, there was one teacher who was like that into it, and oh, like God. bonus credit would be like, "Tell me this Elven word," and I'm like, "Dog, it's an English class. Leave them alone." <laughs> it is a it is a public high school English class. Please. Well, you gotta wonder then. In the future, are we gonna have an Elvish class? No. Because nobody's, oh, nobody's you. Look, if you could somehow get enough people in in the international trade scene to start communicating in Elven to to do business, then maybe. Is that a challenge? <laughs> yes, yes, that is a challenge. Please go and create do that. a new country, and it's just filled with like people who will elves. elves. Yeah, I, I would have agreed with you before going to RIT. Unfortunately, I went to RIT where they have a class called Nerfology, and I went, I guess we've run out of ideas, boys. We've reached the end of the line. No more classes. We've figured them all out. <laughs> Wasn't there a class where a dude tried to, was teaching, um, like, international relations through civilization? Wasn't that a class? Yes, yes. That was a class that I wanted to join, but they only did it for one semester because the guy left RIT afterwards. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> That's, I mean, I guess, like, you could make it the content, like, if, if the base, if the core content is actually informative, and then you're just using the gimmick of, like, civilization, or... Yes, that's, like, yeah, that's how it worked, is yeah. the first half of the class would be, like, I'm going to teach you about a very in-depth international, like, mm-hmm. concept... 
Uh, and then for the second half, he's like, all right, play Civ and then write me how this concept relates to what you did in Civ. And I'm like, damn, that sounds fucking rad. That's fucking cool as hell. And I wish that class still existed. But, alas. Fuck, there's this one game that I remember that was literally based around, like, um, like, it's a tabletop game based around, like, politics and like having to like negotiate uh a war with each other fuck i'm trying to remember what it was called is it diplomacy or... is it civ it might be diplomacy i think it's diplomacy okay i actually haven't played that much diplomacy but i've had plenty of friends who are like jake we gotta play diplomacy i, I understand yeah, I... it takes 20 hours to play i, but really, like, want to we play gotta. Diplomacy. I really want to play diplomacy um okay so yeah not, I, I found it it is diplomacy um so it's essentially like uh sort of like risk mm. where you have to like um conquer like a like essentially all of europe and you're playing like one of the countries in europe um and the way that it works is that like uh it's a like the combat itself is pretty simple it's like you make an order and you move a unit to like a space and if a unit finds a uh, another unit they just bounce off each other mm. um so you have to have like two units take over like a space that's controlled by one unit um yeah and that's where like the diplomacy comes in because you have to like negotiate with like other powers of um to like be like hey help me take down this person and I'll give you some land over here and like we can fucking like hash this out and cut up like Europe like evenly between us and that way we can both win. Um and that's <laughs> where I that's stab where, like, you in the back and then I well, win. Well, of course. Of course. <laughs> Always. But it's still but it's one of those cases where it's like um the combat is like so simple so like the real gameplay aspect is uh the negotiation and the yeah. aspects of like a, uh, having it, to like juggle people. Uh, so what's what are they? What's the type? What's the game type that they call Secret Hitler? It's like social. Uh, social deduction. Yeah, yeah, like a social mm-hmm. de- deduction type game, um, which I think you know it, it could that could. It's amazing that you could make a game with so few components just by being like just talk about it and then like that's it and you can have something like you know basically the players just generate their own gameplay by just having these conversations with each other and then that's like it because like obviously you know secret hitler everybody know most people know about secret hitler it's literally just a tiny ass board with some very basic like three or two cards and then just like repeated for like a deck uh and then you know a little board that indicates like okay you can do some special actions when enough fascist policies get passed but it's really just all about like the social deduction of figuring out who the fascists are and who hitler is um and so that's that's really cool Um, and that's that's almost why i enjoy the like those types of games a little bit more than among us because even though among us does have some social deduction in it mm -hmm. a lot of it is luck based yeah. If that makes sense, like you just have to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Where Secret Hitler is the like the, the only real way to play Secret Hitler successfully is to sit down and look at everybody else yeah. and be like, "All right, I have to like math my way through this answer." Now there's still some of that in among us. Like you you can be like, "All right, well, no one came out of like you didn't go into medical, but you came out of medical." Yeah. That doesn't make any logical <laughs> sense. I actually um I actually have to disagree with what you just said about like Among Us being more luck based. Um because I find that like the my more successful games, I like to play Among Us by like essentially creating psych profiles for everybody and like having different characters from, of people in my head. Mm-hmm. And like every action they do just sort of adds into that. Mm-hmm. Um so when they start like saying that when I start asking them questions and they start doing things that are out of that character line, um then it becomes more likely that they are like suspect. And when I start getting information from other people, like say people, like you start asking people like where they're at and like gaining more information, it becomes less of a puzzle of like, oh, I was just unlucky and like, and didn't see the killer and more of like a puzzle of like, okay, well this is all the information that we have. Let's start piecing Mm -hmm. this puzzle together to like um, deduce who the most likely imposter is. Yeah, and that's fair. I've also, I, I'm not as hardline on that opinion as I used to be. I think there's still a lot of like, uh, well, you know, it, it. I think the more I watch it, the less I hold that s- straight up opinion. I just think there's j- just because Among Us is so virtual based, it's mm-hmm. something where I, like I just don't connect to it as well as if it's physical yeah, right there and I can the table. Yeah, I can yeah. see you across the table. And I think that's why they like it's 
you know, the common comparison for that game is Werewolf, which is, again, another social deduction mm-hmm. game um, where you try to figure out who the werewolf is. And um, I think the reason that they add all of, like, the task components and then, like, having to deal with figuring out where everybody's located on the map is because you aren't in person when you're doing it. Like, they, they realize that if it was just, you know, player X kills player Y, now talk, but just virtually people would just be like, well, we could just do this in a Discord call, because they could. Yeah. Um, and so that's they're just adding stuff onto it to, to like, add some features. I, th- I think it works to their benefit, like, having to think about where everybody's located on the map and then trying, like, the positioning game in Among Us is really interesting because yes. you could you could be like, all right, everybody stack on top of each other. We could stay safe this way, but that doesn't actually like, I thought that when I first was playing it, but then I realized if more than two people stack on top of each other and one of the three or more is the killer, is the killer they could do it. And then because of how like it, you know, it does or doesn't animate, uh, you can't really tell which one of the three plus people was actually or killed like the last guy. And then, and then you're fucked. So, like, yeah. that's a weird meta game you've got to play with it itself, and there's, like, a bunch of stuff like that in Among Us. Um, yeah, and actually, now, the more that I think about it, my original take is kind of bad, and I think it's more <laughs> about the, the my second take, which is I I like social deduction when I can physically see people, yeah. just because yeah. that's how yeah. I operate. That's uh, but, but I still, uh, once again, I, I'm not trying to imply that I think Among Us is not a fun game. Uh, it, it's just if you played it with me... I enjoy it a lot because I like social deduction games yeah. and I like games where uh, I can be like, oh man, I'm about to lie so hard right now. I can't wait. Yeah. I, I'm so, uh, what's it called? I'm so hit or miss with my imposter games because some nights I'll be like, I'm going to be a lying little piece of shit. I'm going <laughs> to lie all over you. And then other nights I'm just like, hello, I have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ah! just going to do it. I'm just going to do a kill and die. I don't give a shit. I'm just here to... Just, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I was... It, I feel like that's almost why I enjoy them. Because I, I, I too, also have some pretty bad, like, social anxiety. Like, uh... I don't know how much Nick has interacted with this. Because I feel like by the time I was in sophomore year of college, I shed some of this. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, when I'm in a... great for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... I am very bad at interacting in like groups that are larger than like eight people Mm. Uh, and Mm. also like new people. But when it's uh, because I'm, I don't want to mess up, but when it's a social deduction game and the point is like, Hey, you are the social contract you have signed by playing this game is (laughs) go as low as you want. Right. Yeah. Like I'm like, all right. you I have the in. I have the actual social agreement between everyone here that mm-hmm. if I like just mess something up, it's just like part of the game. Yeah, now that yeah. could be a very toxic excuse for my <laughs> very poor behavior sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I, um, I'm inclined to agree actually because uh, what's it called? Um, it does it does let you be a little shit. You know, it does let you be a little bastard boy. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I've, for I've, sure. I've, I've I have uh. Oh my god, I have uh, gaslit so many people in Among Us. Yeah. I have, oh my, and it's, but like, it was But that's like, what you gotta do to survive, right? Like, that's the, most, the whole, you're in the magic the circle. Is, you've stepped into yeah, the magic yeah. circle, so you, and you you understand. But that's and it's just... like, it's, it's a relatively, like, again, like you said, it was a social construct, uh, not construct, uh, contract. Mm. Um, it's a relatively safe space, uh, because you could, like, be a bastard. I could. Yeah. You could gaslight someone, and then once that round is over, it's like at the end of it, it's like one of those cases where it's like, dude, that was awesome. Like you liked so well, and like you get yeah. to talk about that like as friends immediately afterwards, which yeah. is like I think so much fun because, um, because then you get to like, because uh, at the end of it, it's just a game, right? right. Like yeah. you can you can gaslight like a room of like ten people and be like, no, I didn't kill him. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was you. Oh, it was me. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I was so bad at that at the beginning of Among Us. Um, because like there was a time where I did a bad kill and somebody walked in and saw me do it, but it was only one person. And the play is to gaslight the shit out of that person and be like, I saw you kill them, not the other uh-huh. way around. I just like immediately fucking gave up and roll. Like I was like, yeah, you just got me. <laughs> yeah, you got but, me, like, man. It was. There you can definitely it. finagle your way out of that by just oh, gaslighting the shit out of them. I've 
I've um, what's it called? My favorite moments are when I'm uh, when I'm imposter. Uh, mm-hmm. And I have a friend Andy, um, and he trusts me. Oh, he trusted. He used to trust me a lot. <laughs> he used to trust me a lot. Um, and uh, it, I would try to keep Andy alive as long as possible, and mm-hmm. he'd keep me alive when we're both crewmates. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and I would just like as much as possible appeal to like Andy and I's like connection mm-hmm. <laughs> and be like Andy I've been with you the whole time you yeah like it can't be me we were together the whole time we were together the whole time and like um it'd be like Andy and I and like one other person and I'd slip up a little bit like intentionally slip up a little bit so Andy has to choose and I just put my life on that line and be like Andy it's between me and this other person <laughs> I trust you. I know it's. I know it's this other person. That's okay. messed up. The fact that you intentionally slip up. That's oh messed yeah. Up. No, I love. Um, what's it called? <laughs> I love creating scenarios in Among Us. Um, because when I'm like, I used to play really aggressively, uh, detective, mm-hmm. and like I would try to solve everything. And I realized that after a while, like it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but after like five, like ten games of like just sort of solving it, Going ham. it's sort of, it gets kind of like boring it's stale. if you're just yeah so you got to like mix it up a bit yeah and plus like i'm a dungeon master so like yeah you gotta try re- on you're, you're put on different different masks different personas yeah so yeah know, as it were. and you know and make little scenarios and torture your friends you know it's, <laughs> it's, it's just a game right guys yeah, like come on. it's just gaslighting it's just a game just call it call me jigsaw all right we're just part call of me the jigsaw. game it's just a game it, i'm just it's, I'm, it's my birthday i'm just a little birthday boy it's just a game <laughs> That, that does improve the experience, but I'm going to tell a story that I feel like I tell every time Still Seduction is brought up, where uh, Nick knows this person. It, it was my friend Chase, okay. and we're playing Secret Hitler. Oh, and, boy. And me and Chase have this l- long <laughs> back and forth about not trusting each other, like, but, but to like a fun extent. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We're, we're like, you know, busting each other's balls over it and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, I just remember he, he starts off the game and gives me two red cards oh, yeah. and, and, and secret hitler red card oh, you got blue cards and got red cards red cards are basically bad if you're on the side of good and i i was an innocent uh and like i was like ah oh, damn so i i placed the red card down and chase goes but i gave him a choice between a red card and a blue card so that's how i know he's he's actually <laughs> that's a bad messed guy. up and i was like that's not true chase <laughs> <laughs> and but he kept going with that and i was like all right he has to be a bad guy. There's no way he would do this turn one to throw me <laughs> under the bus. And the game ends and we lose. And he flips his card over and he was innocent the entire time. And the <laughs> worst part was, is he was like, Jacob, I need to let you know, I discarded a blue card so that I could give you two reds and lie about <laughs> you having a choice. And I was like, why would you do this to me? Oh my that's god. bad play. Yeah, that's literally, like, but it's just that's, fun. At that point, it's just, yeah, that, that's just fun. Yeah. But, but it's one of those things where it's like, Th- that's kind of the fun rapport that you can get in these games mm-hmm. where like you can just f- intentionally destroy oh, somebody and you're just like uh, i can't believe you did you're that like, just, just yeah to, just to I have some fun just to this. have a laugh you can just be like i'm going to be evil on purpose today <laughs> <laughs> i've done that so many times um there are times where i just fuck with lights uh, oh if, my god if people if lights go out i just sit on lights when i'm crewmate and i just <laughs> flip it on and off and just don't let anyone turn the lights on oh my god you were a then, bastard man <laughs> there are other times where i uh what's it called just sometimes stand on vents you know just just to mess with people just to like throw them off <laughs> just because i'm like I'm hey bro i'm just vibing i'm just vibing <laughs> pat what are you doing on that vent <laughs> i'm just sitting here don't worry about it man don't worry about it no don't worry i'm just yeah. sitting on the vent don't worry Dude, about it <laughs> i yeah no among and i think uh to going back to what you were saying jacob about how you know it's a it's a social contract that you signed by stepping into the magic circle um and it it probably that probably explains why it was just like such a good sort of icebreaker game on floor with csh like people were playing that thing every almost every night it seemed like for like a lot of a lot of my first semester there um and into the second semester just because like yeah you could just go in and like fuck around with people and then afterwards you're like man that was a good game and then you just step back out and you're and then you could still you know improve your relationship with somebody even when you're being a gaslighting asshole in yeah, secret exactly. hitler because you're like all right this person <laughs> yeah. can fuck around and have fun 
in within this like you know social social contract magic circle game um i but like yeah i remember uh i think we were playing it up in brandreth and i was so like enraged by somebody i think somebody did the same thing to me where they gave me two reds and, and then they said i gave they gave me a blue and a red i like we both got up out of our chairs and started like shouting at each other over the table like it was it was intense but we were having a fucking yeah. blast like i and i think that intensity is something that i really enjoy because like i said at the start of this like i don't like being i mean under only under certain situations do I become a very intense person. And I like that, like, outlet yeah. of just being like... <laughs> you have the avenue. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just Please need to go rage feral. Out. Yeah, you need to go feral yeah. sometimes. And Secret Hitler is a great socially acceptable way to do that when, you're, when yeah, you step into that because, circle. Because it, 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 it's encouraged as a strategy. Right. Because you're... You are basically the best way to play social deduction games is you have to play them constantly and you have to find out what play style that works. And I found that usually that defaults you to either someone who doesn't talk a lot mm -hmm. or someone who does not spend the entire time yeah. talking. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then you got to really watch out for the people that are able to like flip flop pretty easily. Um, or just, or just like sprinkle in enough conversation to like be contributing no. to it, but not, you know that easy you know just a little, little, just little like just a little tease that that stuff that stuff is when i'm like send them to the event boys <laughs> <laughs> they've changed <laughs> they've changed their attitude by half a centimeter get them out of here <laughs> can't trust them well, that's that's where the um that's where creating like little psych profiles for everybody comes in oh my God. yeah yeah my and friends obviously... and i used to play um oh, go on. what was it called avalon avalon it's a very similar game and we eventually got to the point where everybody knew each other's psych profiles, and so it wasn't fun anymore, because you just know if someone's lying at that point. Mm. Oh, but that's where that's where um that's what I don't know. Like that's what I like about Among Us. It's like, um, even when you start knowing people, if you're playing with people who are like competitive and like like to win, they'll still try to like come up with like new ways to fuck new you strategies. Up. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what I I like doing that all the time. I it's get like, a little bit worried personally when somebody says that they can they're getting competitive like like seriously competitive with among us because then i start to think that they might be a sociopath <laughs> i'm always competitive in among us I, okay so I, I i guess what i mean is like yes you could be competitive in among us in the sense that you want to win but like mm -hmm. when you want to consistently have like a, a 10 out of 10 like perfect win ratio like and you're like you're you're trying to like min max shit and then like figure out literally every single tell possible. I get a little bit worried that you might start being Fun. like edging into sociopathy. <laughs> yeah, what are they adding great. ranked mode to Among Us? <laughs> ranked yeah, Among I want, Us. I want ranked Among Us. There's nothing yeah. wrong with being a little bit of sociopath, Nick. Come on, bud. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of ableist, bud. Come yeah, on. Yeah, no, they should put in ranked Among Us and then the top 100 players get put on a list and they get watched. I, I mean, I guess I kind of understand <laughs> what you're watch saying. List. National watch list. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I kind of understand what you're saying, Nick, which, which is, but that goes back to sort of the social contract aspect right. of it. You like, gotta be wary you, everyone of... has to agree that people will, will and can go a little ape shit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's, it's just, just for the game. game. Right. It's and just the you, game. You if, like, but that's not to excuse people's bad behavior. Like, if someone says something like truly awful, like, yeah. understandable. Like, yeah. that that goes outside the rules of the social contract. Well, yeah, but that's like, all, yeah, exactly. That's also outside of the magic circle to say some fucked up shit. Like, yeah, like you can get I, I feel bad, like, but you, yeah. you, you gotta be I, respectful to fellow human beings. You yeah, know? I, I, I feel like as long, like, I, I remember uh, in the secret Hitler days, like, there'd always be, like, one or two people who'd get, like, kind of miffed if they, like, lost mm -hmm. and i'm like <laughs> dog it's gonna happen yeah like you, you can't, can't win every time you, you again, can't win yeah you can't have the perfect win ratio and if you are striving yeah. for that constantly you're <laughs> you're getting a little I, I about it yeah yeah I, I understand you getting like angry in the game but like once the game's over we all gotta like breathe breathe pull back take it back from like i mean you played secret hitler with me nick like 
sure maybe like right after it's revealed who's won like yeah. i'm still a little at the yeah. 10 no, but yeah, like yeah. very quickly after that i try and pull the handbrake yeah, as again much like as possible. you and chase you get you and chase got you get very intense and it's just like holy fuck what's happening and then like yeah at the end of the game it's like ah oh, fuck and then you know, <laughs> decompress and it's fine you guys don't like, hate each other irl you know so it's all good it's important not to get into uh, any heated gamer moments outside of Among Us. <laughs> Among Us, you're allowed to be a heated gamer. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, can... don't say the N-word, but, like, sure. Oh, obviously not. Jesus. <laughs> whoa. Uh, whoa. Dude, that's... that's what you... Come on, man. No, that's, all right. So, that is, so no, you guys, that, is, you guys... is, that is tied to heater gamer moment. You I, know, cannot, I know, You cannot separate those two anymore, unfortunately. Do, do you guys know about r slash toilet paper usa no what no. all right so so it's a joke subreddit on the conservative outlet known as turning point usa which just says like some of the worst stuff possible but toilet paper usa is all about taking screen caps of things they're saying and just fucking editing it and fucking memeing on them <laughs> so so there's a toilet paper usa post of uh, aoc playing among us and it was just aoc you claim to be a gamer and you use none of the gamer words and i'm like dude i can't believe you <laughs> oh my god <laughs> There was one, oh god, there was there was an edit of, or, or a parody of Turning Point USA that was like, Turning Point, I, I love the Return to Monkey memes so much, it's so <laughs> stupid, but I love them so, I think, I just like, after, after Uh Oh Stinky got old, I was just looking for a new outlet for loving monkeys, and... <laughs> <laughs> Nick's always on the hunt for new ways to love monkeys. He always some, just wants to love monkeys. There was some turning point monkey meme that was just fucking hilarious, and I I can't remember this. I'm gonna butcher it if I try to like piece it together from memory, but it was just some good shit. And so I I just yeah, there's really good edits. There's also the fucking um edits of uh conservative memes where they just cut off the bottom text. And, like, whatever the top half of it is supremely hilarious just by itself. Like, oh, God. Here, I can, uh, there's definitely, if you search cropped conservative memes, you can definitely just find them. Uh, cropped conservative memes. Let's see. Um. Curious. <laughs> I think that's such a funny ending line. <laughs> oh, yeah, curious. curious. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Okay, there's one that where they they chopped it, the the um oh who's the fucking uh, stereotypical uh, Western guy uh, John Clint Eastwood Clint Eastwood yeah the Clint Eastwood picture of John on, on stream right now <laughs> John Wayne was what I was thinking of uh, John one one seven yeah that's him oh yeah um, Halo but. <laughs> There's uh oh here's a list of them. There some of them are cut up from the bottom and some are from the top. <laughs> One is just <laughs> when I was five, I died. <laughs> <laughs> a, Nick, send, send a, me a link to this. There's a, here. I'll I'll drop it in the Discord. Um, <laughs> what the one on the bottom left is a cropped image of uh 11 and it's, and then the top text is just this is why I don't give a shit. What? Oh god! What the fuck? What? There. I right, just uploaded it. Um. <laughs> and then the other one next to it is uh, five, I died. Is Clint Eastwood <laughs> respect a woman's choice? That's it. That's all you need. It's great. Um. And in the same vein, there was a. Uh, <laughs> If you guys um, aren't aware, there is a comic artist, a Nazi comic artist called Stone Toss. Oh um, yeah, and rock he, thrower. Yeah, yeah, Pebble Pebble Toss, Pebble uh, Pebble Chucker, um, who posts very uh, just bootlicker and like. Um, the edits of those are hilarious. Yeah, so there's there's a subreddit <laughs> that collects them called Antifa Stone Toss that edits all of his comics into like you know uh pro-choice and and like anti-establishment me anti-establishment memes and they're they're all great and i think the best part is that pretty much every edit it just has um because he he puts his watermark in between the panels and it just like it's like his stone toss.com or whatever um so all of the edits just replace that with stone toss is a nazi <laughs> yeah it's just, it's just good love that love that yeah you love to see it but um there was one I saw with like the uh, the Alexa from him, and someone had edited 
Oh, because yeah. the, the Alexa sweats and he's like, Alexa, why are you wet? And it's just no answer from the Alexa for three panels. <laughs> uh, <laughs> me that's, too. Yeah, that's just uh, that's just our fucking humor these days, dude. Like, if you could... Oh, I love the... um. Oh, they did that with uh the fucking... Oh, what was the comic series? Control Alt Delete. That one that had the yeah, lost, the with lost. Panel, but they just they would just edit those to take out like whatever the punchline was, and, like whatever the gamer punchline was, they would just edit it out, and then it would just be three panels that are sort of vaguely connected to each other, but somehow they ended up being funnier than the original comic, because the comics back like those comics were like super just like shoved into your face the punchline to the point where it just was uh. hurtful. <laughs> Um, uh, there, there's a good video by H. Bomber guy that goes into Control Alt Delete, and I'm not gonna lie, he did remind me that all comics back then were like that. That is true. <laughs> you go, you go on an on, you go on online comics from like 2008 to 2015, and they're like, see, the joke is, <laughs> yeah, they basically game. all had, yeah, they all, yeah, pretty much, game, girl, dumb, girl, cook. Uh, you know, gamers are un- misunder. Basically, the proto Big Bang gamers. Was- they, they are they are what I can only describe as millennial boomer humor. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, oh that's shit, an excellent you're right. Way of putting that's a good it. One. And they, uh, I mean, I I think it's it's not a stretch to say that those comics walked so Big Bang Theory could run. Like <laughs> that is that is on it. I could see the connection between this, like the one just leading into the other. As time went on, um, yeah. God, there, uh, I was complaining to a friend about this, but like the the memes on Reddit that get me like actually like my actual blood boiling is when it's like <laughs> girls are like this, but boys they're like this. And I'm like, dude, we're like two steps away from being like, can you believe my ex wife? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's fucking crazy how close we are. And then at the same, like, Wojak memes in general, I think I saw the greatest, like, commentary on Wojaks of all time where it was literally just showing how, like, it was just like, here's here's the different Wojaks. This Wojak is for this type of emotion. This Wojak is for this type of emotion. Wait a minute. We've done this all before. It's just Rage <laughs> Comics. We're doing Rage Comics again. <laughs> And like you, if you With a look fresh at coat it, of paint, yeah. yeah, and if you look at it, it's like shockingly similar in some in some cases. It's just like history just does repeat itself. We think that we're, I think we've come to the point where we are so hyper uh, rapidly transitioning between new meme formats because like every day, you know, there's something new, and then the old format. I remember when it was every month, like the. Uh the knuckles meme do you know what the way that was yeah that was one so... month if that right and then it and then it felt like a year ago after it died yeah. it's just like wow i can't believe that meme was like popular only a month ago and and so like i think we've gotten to the point where it's happening so fast that we're just we've just run we can't generate new shit fast enough so we're just falling back subconsciously well, on old shit in new ways well, we're making a. We're, we're eventually going to hit the meme singularity. I was about we're, to say that. We already <laughs> hit it, man. We're at the <laughs> meme singularity. <laughs> we're not quite there. I feel like we're not quite there. I feel like we can go deeper. We're definitely. We, like, we're definitely compress. edging it right now. We're edging the meme singularity. It's, oh, I love it. I'm so excited for when there's a new meme every second. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. You can't even pro- fully process the joke. It's just like you're already. It's gonna on be the like you one. click on one. You're like, shit. I'm missing the new one. You gotta pack out and go to the next one. You know, I do have to admit, I uh, sometimes I do feel my age when like I look at these old, these new memes, these newfangled memes, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't get this meme. What is what's, <laughs> what's like? Understand. What's like a new meme that you don't get? Ah, oh, fuck. Um, well, it took me a little bit to get uh to understand like different some of the different Wojaks. Like, mm, yeah. Um, I don't even. I never even. I never even knew them as like being named Wojak up until now. I knew yeah. them as like the feels bad man. Uh, right, because that's what it start. It started as feels bad man, which was, I think that was a rage comic, possibly, yeah, or maybe it was, I've or re- maybe it was separate. But I mean, rage comics started on 4chan, so I assume they they really all fall under the same umbrella. Um, it's just that I think, <laughs> honestly, I think that Wojak wouldn't see the renaissance it's seeing right now if Pepe didn't get co opted by white <laughs> nationalists. Like, 
it used to be, I think, Pepe and Wojak were on equal footing, and they were kind of like, they were, they, they seemed like they were brothers in arms, kind of in in the in the meme verse, if you will. Um, yeah. But then, since uh, Pepe has sadly fallen out of favor due to uh, being co opted by bad groups, I, I want. So, like, to jump in on this, I, first off, I really want to see the Pepe documentary about the creator Pepe trying to be like, oh, hey, God. I'm going to work really hard in order to make sure that Pepe is no longer a hate symbol. Yeah. Uh, but also, uh, I would say that Wojak started off as, I don't know how in tune, and I'm going to sound really fucking pretentious by saying this, <laughs> uh -oh, with, uh -oh. like, the, like, alt writers and what memes they prefer but wojeks were up there for a long time yeah, yeah like I they mean, use those boys in a lot of shit the alt right and, is constantly memeing it's the whole meme about how the left can't meme you know all the memes yeah how many yeah, times but, can you use meme in one sentence i think that was the record <laughs> glad you're at least self self self-aware oh. <laughs> but and i mean it's it, a, a lot of it is just like the hard work of trying to on uh indoctrinate some of these comedic phrases mm -hmm. to being like not solely like not being to no longer be co-opted by far-right fascists yeah uh, Take it uh back. and i i mean i i think it is still possible but like once again it's like very tread footing like i still get a little uncomfortable being like ah oh, man mm -hmm. i remember when Pepe was just a fun thing, and then they fucking ruined it. And so, yeah. I, like, I see Pepe's, and I'm like, I'm glad that we are slowly trying to re, like, yeah, it's, reform it is, Pepe, so, for lack of a better term. Yeah, it's, uh, it's there's a, like a very careful line you have to tread because you yeah. don't want to, you know, make yourself appear to be one of these fucking wackos. But at the same yeah. time, you're like, <laughs> they're they're funny Pepe's, you know, they're 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 they can be used for legitimately non-racial or fucking you know ethnocentric funny purposes like yeah it, it's it's just the problem that like you know you have to be careful when using it because you don't want to accidentally use a like a joke that turns out to be a little like uh oh mm -hmm. uh and then that obfuscates people from being able to tell who is the actual like bad guy right <laughs> and who is just using the common language thing yeah uh I mean, it's the 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 most absurd but annoying example is like the OK sign, where like white yeah. supremacists tried to co-opt that or have kind of co-opted that like, into I, like. I remember before you know, the fucking uh, New Zealand shooting happened. Um, I remember people were doing the fucking got him thing all the time, where you just put it like below the belt and you just like look, you know, get somebody to look down there yeah. and be like, got him. It was just like a funny little thing, but then it, you know, became co opted. And yeah, and, and, and that's over. the problem is that like, that's why you got to be careful about using stuff while also trying to use it in a positive way. It, it's just like a very hard line to cross. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think we're slowly getting better at it. Yeah. Uh, but a, a key word to underline there is slowly. And I would say yeah. it's uh, definitely wouldn't be possible. I, I honestly like, although the internet got us to this place, I think the internet is also the only way that can really get uncoopted because like, you know, uh, the classic example is the fucking uh, Nazi swastika was like a Hindu symbol before it got co-opted by the Nazis. And I don't think it's ever really, you're never really going to be able to reclaim the swastika because it happened before, you know, public communication was where it is today. And so it's just got put in all of, you know, the anti-Nazi propaganda. It's just like, this is connected to Nazis and that's pretty much irreversible at this point um mm -hmm. for better or it's, worse. it's 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 kind of used differently like sure it was still used in 1930s germany in order to obfuscate the horrific crimes that mm -hmm. the fascist party was committing but also like memes are not like us like as big of a symbol i might be underplaying it but it's not like something that is etched in stone <laughs> Yeah, if that yeah, makes they're sense. much more fluid. They're, they're much more fluid, so it's it's almost like going back to the thing we said earlier, which is like even if they at, at this point we're producing memes fast enough, like even if we lose a couple to like 
fashies. Yeah. <laughs> like some, that, sometimes we just got to accept that and be like, ah, oh, yeah. Pepe might not be a good look right now. Uh, but shit. also we, we got cheems now. Oh my Cheems's gosh. Cheems. Cool. <laughs> like that kind of shit. Like, I don't know. Yeah. No, new uh, doge lore. Oh my God. I fucking love that shit so much. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I'm on the, the doge. It, it is by far my most visited subreddit. They, they, like, <laughs> They, there's, I mean, and, and in there too, there's, there's sometimes some questionable stuff that I'm like, mm, I don't know about that one. But like on the whole, it seems like they're, um, they're just being used in really inventive ways. And I'm like always excited to see what they do with all this content. Like there's, it's insane to me that on that page, there are a consistent amount of uploads that aren't even like jokes they're just template posts for other people to use in their comics so like they have templates for all these different types of like doge imi image manipulation so there's like a super buff doge and then they're like wearing different hats and shit <laughs> and it's fucking it's fucking amazing that people put so much time and effort into these and tell so many weird stories sometimes there's ones that are like really super wholesome and then there's sometimes there's ones that are just like I, like just completely normal and like i don't know dude it's it's just crazy to watch how how that shit has unfolded um and like yeah i don't know it's just we we just spent like probably 15 20 minutes talking about memes <laughs> hey man there's a lot of them yeah there's, yeah, there's, a, lot are, there there's a lot of memes there's a lot of memes um, we're we're all slowly losing our cognitive abilities so we got to <laughs> communicate somehow so like <laughs> I think I, I like think that. the best way to sum it up it, with like the transition from early memes to today is that um, Circle Tunes animation where they compare like uh, making an old meme was just like oh dude this uh, you know the the classic like uh, pinwheel background with the top text bottom text and like a funny animal in the middle. Um, and then the modern thing is like, all right, first you got to take an image, deep fry it to hell and back, put some shadow figures in it, and then put on some weird ass text saying, me and the boys at 3am looking for beans. And it's just, that's just what our humor is these days. Somehow we've, we've come to, I don't know what we've come to. I, I think, I think the, the thing is, is that I've had this conversation a couple of times and I don't know how much other people agree with it, but I feel like, especially in the late millennial early gen z and even some gen z right now there's just been like this i don't want to say there's just been this falling into absurdist ideology like collectively where we're all just like man nothing matters and the world's really bad but like i don't know well it's me and the boys and we're looking for beans <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i'd say there's definitely been an uptick in uh <laughs> Like just general camaraderie in in the memes I've been seeing, just like just people trying to support each other through memes. Like I don't know. I guess I for... think part of that is because literally, well, not not literally anymore, but for a while, everybody in the world was in the exact same situation, where everybody was in their houses. Yeah, and that was like you know that's, that's where the camaraderie true. is coming in from because everyone is experiencing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, like things like you know all the the king memes that have been popping up recently. Oh yeah, that's which nice. Probably Supported. also ties into the 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 queen memes that came before it. Um, they just, which there's probably a whole like feminist conversation you can have about about men co-opting queens, which there's there's probably a lot that you can go into there. I do not have the time nor the brain capacity to address it, <laughs> but I think... Well, as we were saying, we're losing our ability to communicate. Yeah, I, I think... We have, we have to do it only through memes. Uh, yeah, we can only communicate through memes. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, it's it's it can be a positive message, to, especially just because, like, you know, men have been, you know, we live in a society raised to like uh be under the understanding that you have to do everything yourself and like you have to be independent but like having this camaraderie of like yes king you can do this it's like yeah maybe we're co-opting stuff for women but like it's a good trait to like you know support each other so i feel like it's it's good I don't know. Empathy is cool, man. It's empathy. Do really be cool. More people should try it out. It'd be pretty great, I think. Just as a treat, you know. Yeah, a little. You know, the the public can have a little empathy from fucking rich billionaires as a treat sometimes. As a treat. Yeah, 
Anyways, all right, we've blown past an hour. I actually have to go because I'm going to be playing the new uh, Monster Monster Prom sequel, Monster Camp. Uh, yeah, that's just oh, great. That's they're that's going great. from prom to camp. Is that like after prom? What what is that? No, it's like it's like a summer. I think it's like a summer thing. Like they're doing a summer yes, camp. Yes, it's it, it it takes place after Monster Prom. They're all at a summer. Not all of them. They're at a summer camp. The, uh, they're going to have several of these smaller sequel games coming out, and so each game is going to have two people from Monster Prom right. and then a whole new cast of romances. Yep. I've really enjoyed Monster Camp. I've played through one full playthrough so far. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I love that series. It's real fun. Yeah. It's real cute in a lot of situations as well. And Yeah, a, no, for game. sure. So, uh, I mean, and if you guys want to, we're, we're probably going to be playing it in here. Or if not, I can invite you to wherever we're playing it. I'm going to keep streaming. It's just, I'm just going to switch it over to, to Monster Camp. So if you guys oh, want to hang out for that, um, feel welcome to. And then uh, otherwise, uh, stay safe. Uh, peace out and go vote, please. For fuck's sake, uh, please vote. vote. I voted. Vote. Did you? How about you? Uh, we've all. Uh, I voted. Vote, 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 vote. Yeah. I love voting. Yeah. I haven't voted yet, but I'm going to. Go vote. We vote. Okay. Kings and queens vote these days. Kings and queens <laughs> alike. We all vote. <laughs> Monarchs participate in the democratic <laughs> process, boys. <laughs> oh, uh oh. <laughs> that's that's the that's the modern king and queen's style is to is to participate in democracy. All right. Anyways. I think so, yeah. See you later, and I'll be we'll be back on in a second. But yeah, see you later. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>